Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems from T's out of this book here, the ATI T's Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 165. And we are on page number 95. Please turn to it. Page number 95, not 94. Let me just double check on that. That we are indeed on 95. Yes, we are on 95. And we are going to do practice problems. Page 95. We are going to do the practice problems. that you see on page 95 and those problems deal with the notion of units of measurements how to convert how to go about converting units that are given to us in in metric system to English system or imperial system if you like and how to go about it the other way around if something is given to us in imperial units in yards and feet and inches how to convert them into metric system that's what we've been doing for the last few days and today is going to be the last day on that topic we're going to do the practice problem and that happens to be also the very last topic in the book as far as the math is concerned and after that starting from tomorrow from day number 166 from day 166 through 180 the next 15 videos we'll do the third exam the third practice test practice test number three that you find on page number 99 that's that's going to begin tomorrow and we're going to continue that until day 180 from t6 if you're interested in working through the first two exams that you see here test 1 and test 2 and I see no reason why you wouldn't be interested in, in getting some more practice you will find that we have solved every single math problem that appeared in the previous edition the fifth edition and solutions to those problems are from day number 1 through 80 T5 and to, from day number 1 through 80 includes the test number 1 which was from 61 through 70 in this book right here and test 2 from 70, 71 through 80 from, from here here, 61 through 70, just type in day 61, you will find the test number 1. Test number 2 begins on day number 71, and test number 3 will begin tomorrow on day number 166. It's going to go on for 15 lessons, 15 videos, 166 through 180. Let's get going, shall we? Practice problem. The very first problem says, the very first problem is a very silly question, very simple questions. We are simply being asked to convert 10 milliliters into teaspoon. We are being asked how many teaspoons, how many teaspoons make 10 milliliter. Now the next thing that we are going to put on the blackboard is something that we have to know. Some conversion factors we must memorize. And this is the conversion factors. We have to know that 4.93 milliliter, 4.93 milliliter make, we line everything up. I don't like it when things don't line up. 4.93 milliliter make one teaspoon. Now you don't have to be a stickler in the exam. You're going to end up wasting a lot of time. You're going to end up taking an inordinate amount of time if you try to be very precise. Nobody is looking for precision. You just have to be able to recognize the right answer among the choices that are given to us. And therefore, approximation is just fine. So instead of using 4.93, which makes the calculation very annoying, let's just pretend. That, well, let's not pretend. There is no pretending here. That is the, what we're going to put on the blackboard is a fact. 5 milliliter is approximately 1 teaspoon. It's a fact because we're claiming that it is approximately. We're not claiming this exactly. That's it. We're done. As I said, it's a very silly question. We don't have 5 millimeter, uh, milliliter. We have 10 milliliter. We have 10 milliliter. If we have 5, how do we go from 5 to 10? We multiply both sides by 2 and we're done. So, if 5 milliliter is equal to 1 teaspoon, it stands to reason that 10 milliliter should approximately be 2 teaspoon. And pick one answer choice that comes closest to 2. That's all it is. That's how simple it is. Let's do the next one, shall we? Next one is a little tricky. Next one is a little tricky. But that was it, number, number question number 1. Let's start next next one here so that we don't have to raise the one right away. We are being asked how much is how much are 225 pesos? How much do 225 pesos convert into a dollar? So it's a very long question. They go about in a very 
very verbose manner that this woman is trying to buy. It says Jasmine is in Mexico on vacation. While shopping, she sees a pretty scarf. Well, good for her. The price of this scarf is marked as 225 pesos. And she's contemplating whether or not she should purchase that scarf because 225 sounds a lot to me. And they go on to say that she has seen, Jasmine has seen the same scarf in the U.S. being sold for $18. In the U.S. the price of the same scarf we are told is $18. In the last part is something that will, that will be given to us in the exam. The exchange rate is always given to us. They go on to tell us that one peso, one peso we are told equals six cents. They don't, they don't say six cents, what they say is that one peso is equal to 0 0.06 dollars, which of course is 6 cents. How do we go about it? Well, let's do it on the top, shall we? Let's, go, let's do it on the top. So where do we start? Well, we start with what we, what we are told here, the conversion factor, the exchange rate. Let's start with that. We know that 1 peso, 1 peso is equal to 6 cents. Do everything in cents. Don't, don't worry about decimals. Decimals get to be very annoying. Do the whole problem in cents, you understand? And then we'll convert it into dollars at the end. Okay? So 1 peso is equal to 6 cents, the price is 225 pesos. Well, how do we go about from 20, 1 peso to 225 pesos? Very simple. Take your exchange rate, take that equation and multiply both sides by 225. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So that's it, we're done. We have what we needed, we have what we were looking for on the left hand side, which is 225 pesos. Again, I should have left enough room. 225 pesos and just find out what that is, how many cents is that. Let's do it out on the side here. 225 times 6. Don't fuss about it. Don't worry about that side as I told you before. 6 5 is a 30. 0 carry 3. 6 2 is a 12 plus 3 is 15. 5 carry 1. 2 3 is a 12 plus 1 is 13. Make sure I did the, I did the right calculation, okay? That is not what I have in my notes. And I made a mistake in my notes. In my notes, I have 750, which couldn't possibly be right. How do I know that my notes are wrong and this is correct? In my notes, I have 750, not 1350. How do I know that my notes are uh, what I have in my notes are wrong? Because it's very simple. Two times two times six is 12. So it couldn't possibly be 750. It has to be more than 12. So that's the, that's your answer. It's 1350. Now. Uh, now we can move the decimal. So this six was actually not six. This six was actually six cents. This is a, this this is all in cents. Thirteen one thousand three hundred and fifty cents. So in dollar, it's just going to be fifteen dollars and thirteen dollars and fifty cents. So this turns out to be thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Should she should she should she buy the scarf? The answer is a resounding yes because. The same bloody thing costs $18 in the US. She stands to save $4.50. Why not indeed? That's a good deal. That's a bloody good deal. I would buy this car at that price. I don't know what I would do with it, but I would most definitely buy the bloody thing. Let's go on. Let's go on to number three. Let's go on to question number three. Question number three has several parts to it, so listen very carefully and pay attention, okay? It's helpful, it's always a good idea to have the book in front of you. Even if I forget to remind you, you must have the book in front of you, otherwise it doesn't work. Because it gets to be very tedious for me to actually have to explain everything. If a book is in front of you, it makes life easier. So here's what I want you to do in, in, the, in the third problem. We need room here. You know, I'm going to look in the in the answer key, make sure that it has to be 13, obviously. It can't be 7. 2 times, as I said, 2 times 12 is, uh, 2 times 6 is 12 already. How can it possibly be $7.50? What was I thinking when I was doing my, when I was making my notes? What does the book have to say? Yes, $13.50. All right. In the next problem, I want you to count how many entries there are. Count them and you will see that there are eight entries. Listen very carefully, okay? There are eight entries. I'm not going to put all of them on the blackboard. But what I want you to do is, 
what I want you to do is on one side of the table, on one side of the table, on one side here, on the left hand side, put down eight letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. There are eight of them. And on the other side of the table, on the other side, on the right hand side, next to each entry, put down letters. What should we start with? Let's start with letter P. So on the other side, put down P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, P, U, V, and W. One. And as we find the answer, we're just going to mash them. Do you understand? Let's get going. So that's what we are asked to find. We, we, we're being asked to match them. The first entry is, the first entry is 250 milliliter. 250 milliliter. And again, I'm not going to keep reminding that any kind, any time you put a conversion factor on the blackboard, that is something you are expected to know by heart. We must know by heart that it is a thousand milliliter that make one liter. How do we know that? Because milli means milli means a thousand of uh, of something, a thousand of something, thousand with a t, a thousand. So if you take a thousand of a liter, whatever the liter is, if you divide it up into thousand equal portions, that one portion is called one milliliter, and one thousand of them are going to make one liter. But we don't want one thousand; we want two hundred and fifty. For two hundred and fifty, well, what is half of one thousand? Half of one thousand is five hundred, and half of five hundred is two fifty. In other words. If you take a quarter of that, if you divide this side by 4, what will end up here is 250. Because 1000 divided by 4 is 250. But if you're going to divide this side by 4, we must divide that side by 4. There you go, we are done. The answer is 250 milliliter is a quarter of a liter. This is one quarter of a liter. One quarter of a liter. And whichever one says one quarter of a liter, and that will be letter U, A to U. So here is here is U, here is A. So that's our first connection. A to U. A equals A equals U. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number two. Number two, we're being asked to convert. 88 milliliter into cubic centimeter. How do we know that they are asking us to convert into cubic centimeter? That's something you have to understand. By looking at the second column, you have to understand that we are supposed to match something that goes with milliliter. And the only unit that you're going to see on the other column that, that goes with the milliliter is cubic centimeter. Well, of course, milliliter said we could convert this into liter, we could convert it into kiloliters, we could convert this into anything, uh, anything of, uh, in terms of liters, but in this part, unlike the second and unlike the first part where they were simply converting milli millimeter or the milliliter to liters, they were both metric system. Here we're going from metric to English because that's the only thing that matches in the second column. How many cubic centimeter make how many cubic centimeter make milliliter? And we know we know that One milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. The, the important question is how do we know that? To which to which the answer is because we have watched how do we know that? Because we have watched T's day one hundred and seventeen. On day one hundred and seventeen we learn why exactly one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. We're not going to go through it right now because we're just doing the problems. We're not learning the concept. Concepts are something that we already learned. This is, this is, this is, this is the quiz. So therefore, if one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter, uh, one, cubic centi uh, one cubic centimeter rather, something that we learned on day number 117, therefore 88 milliliter must equal 88 cubic centimeter. It's a very simple problem. Let me change the color. Must equal 88 cubic centimeter. And that would be what letter is that? If you number them P, Q, R, S, T, so forth, you will see that there is letter S. B equals S. Here's your B. 
and b equals s where is s right here is s b equals s look at the note here b equals s let's do the next one shall we part three part three says how many kilos how many kilos would make 4.4 pound and again how do we know that that is being asked here because they gave us 4.4 pound in one column and as you look at the second column the only thing that the, when you talk about kilos you can possibly you know, when we do, when we're dealing with kilos the only thing they could possibly ask us to is to convert the kilo kilogram into gram or convert the kilogram into pound that's all it is and the only entry that we see in the second column is in terms of pounds so we have to, we, that's how we know that we're being asked to convert 4.4 pounds into kilos. How many kilos will make? When I say kilos, kilo is just an abbreviated version. People are lazy in the real life. When they say kilo, they're talking about kilogram. People do not actually say in the parts of the world where they use kilograms, and since I'm used to that part of the world, I have this habit that when people just say kilo, what they mean is kilogram. Everybody understands. Everybody understands that. But in the other cases, you have to spell it out. You cannot say, I'm going to drive, uh, you cannot possibly say, I'm going to drive 100 kilo. You have to say, I'm going to drive 100 kilometers. Do you understand? If somebody asks you, uh, what speed were you driving at? You cannot possibly say, I was going one, 100 kilo per hour. You have to say, I was going 100 kilometers per hour. You cannot possibly say that I want, when you talk about liters, you must say kilo liters. In the context of liters and in distance, in the context of distance, one must spell it out, kilometers, kiloliters. But for some strange and inexplicable reason, it comes, when it comes to weight, we just say kilo. When you go in the shop, in the, in a butch, butcher shop, and butcher asks butcher ask you how much, how much meat do you need, just give me a couple of kilos. Give me half a kilo. Do you understand? And he understands half a kilo means half a kilogram. That's why I keep talking, I, refer to in, I keep referring to as a kilo. But kilo actually means kilogram. Do you understand? So, how many kilos make 4.4 pounds? Well, let's find out. What is our conversion factors? Do you know? You should know your conversion factors. We know. And whenever I say, we know, believe it or not, it means exactly that. We know that. We should know that. We have to know that. We must know that. If we're going to sit for the exam, this is something we must know by heart. We know that one kilo, one kilogram makes 2.2 pounds. 2.2 two pounds make one kilogram but we don't want 2.2 pounds we point we want 4.4 pounds we don't want 4.2.2 we want 4.4 4.4 isn't that nice of them to give you 4.4 and not 4.3 or 4.7 or 6.3 there you go 4.4 is exactly two times you can see there multiply both sides by two if you can multiply that side by two you must multiply that side of the equation by two and there we have it two kilos two kilogram make 2.2 times 2 is 4.4 pound. Let's see what we can do. How can we match it? We're looking for something that says 2 kilos in the second column, okay? Go through it carefully and find a letter where it says... Oh, it's the very first one, letter P. So C matches with P. C matches with P. Let's do the next one. Number 4. Number four. Answer choice D says 100 centimeters or on less centimeters, sorry, 100 centigrade, the temperature, 100 centigrade, is how many Fahrenheit? And again, how do we know that that's what they are looking for? Well, it's very simple as I keep explaining to you over, over and over again. If you're dealing with temperature and if you are given a centigrade, Centigrade is what we use in the metric system and in the English system that we use in the US we measure our temperatures in terms of Fahrenheit. In the winter time when we say that it's 30 degrees outside well it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not centigrade because 30 degrees centigrade is hot as hell. Do you understand? How do we know that? Because we know our conversion factors. We know that 100 centigrade We know that 100 centigrade is 212 Fahrenheit. 
And again, how do we know that? Well, we just do. This is something we have to know, we must know. You should also know that when we say there's 30 degrees outside, well, 30 degrees is actually 0 degrees centigrade. 0 degrees centigrade is actually 32 Fahrenheit. So what we refer to as 32 degrees, well, when we say 32 degrees, we're talking about Fahrenheit, is what the rest of the world will refer to as 0 degrees. So in in rest of the world, they use centigrade. So if you're traveling someplace in Asia or someplace in Africa, and they tell you the temperature is going to be 40 degrees tomorrow, well, 40 degrees, you're talking about 40 degrees, 40 degrees centigrade. And that is hot as hell. What I'm going to do right now is to actually show you how to convert centigrade to Fahrenheit in a quick and dirty way. This is not the exact method. This is not the exact formula. It is a quick and dirty way. So here's, here's the quick and dirty way. Quick and dirty way of converting centigrade to Fahrenheit. How do we do that? Yes. Here's how we do it. Well, we just said tomorrow it's going to be 40 degrees centigrade. And if you're not familiar with the centigrade system, you might wonder, well, 40 degrees doesn't sound that bad. I better take my sweater. It's going to be very, very cold, 40 degrees. It's barely above freezing. No, they're talking about centigrade. And if you want a quick and dirty way, this is what you do. What, you take your centigrade, you take your centigrade, whatever it is, and you cut this into half. And add, sorry, not cut it in half. Take two times as much. Whatever the centigrade is, you take two times the centigrade, and you add 30 to it. And that will give you approximate, approximate value of the Fahrenheit. Not exact, but approximate. That's just a quick and So whatever it is, centigrade, you double it and add 30 to it. So if you double it, you get 80. 80 plus 30 is 110 degrees. My God, that is hot as hell. 40 degrees centigrade is 110 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 110 degrees Fahrenheit approximately. Do you understand? So that's just a quick and dirty way of doing this. And if you were going the other way around, if you're going the other way around, if you have it, if you have your temperature in Fahrenheit, for example, if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you want to convert this into centigrade. It's very simple. You take your Fahrenheit, cut it in half, and 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 sub subtract 30 from it. You see here, to go from here centigrade to centigrade to Fahrenheit, we take our centigrade and we multiply it by two. The Fahrenheit here, the Fahrenheit answer is approximately 2 times centigrade plus 30. So if you want to go the other way around, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you just cut this into, first you have to subtract 30 from it. If you want to go to Fahrenheit to centigrade, centigrade is approximately, whatever the Fahrenheit is, you subtract 30 from it. You subtract 30 from it, bring the 30 to this side, and then take half of the results. So, if you if you try and figure out 100 degrees Fahrenheit is approximately what what it is in centigrade, you, you take 30 from it, which is 70, and you divide 70 divided by 2 is approximately 35 centigrade. Approximately 35 centigrade is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. How do we know that? Because we take 100, whatever the Fahrenheit is. Whatever the Fahrenheit is that you and I are used to in the U.S., whatever the Fahrenheit temperature is, subtract 30 from it, whatever the result is, take half of that. And that's approximate value in centigrade. And that's what you're going to do in the real exam if you have to do convert, if, you are, if you're being asked to go to the conversion in, in, from centigrade to Fahrenheit, you're not going to use the exact formula. The exact formula is very, very annoying. We're not going to go there right now because as it is, this is turning into a very long video. Let's move on. So what was the answer? We never did put down the answer. So, number D was 100 degrees centigrade is equal to 212 Fahrenheit. So we're looking for 212 Fahrenheit. Let's pick up speed here. 212, what letter would that be? Just this T is in town. And this was D. So D equals T. There is your T and there is your D. D equals T. The fifth one. Four down, four to go. The letter E says 250 meters. And we're being asked to convert into kilometers because kilometers is what we see in the other column. Again, we know we know that 1,000 meters equal one 
kilometers. We know that because that's what kilo means. Kilo means thousand times something. The prefix kilo means one thousand times something. Not one thousand. One thousand with the th would be milli. Kilo means a thousand times something. Kilogram is one thousand kilo. Oh, sorry. Kilogram is one thousand gram. Kilometer is one thousand meter. Except you don't pronounce it kilometers. We just say kilometers. Kiloliter is a thousand liter. So, one thousand meter equals one kilometer. We don't want one thousand. We want two fifty. So divide both sides by four, just like we did before earlier. Because we know, because we know half of thousand is five hundred and half of five hundred is two fifty. So if you divide this side by four, we must divide this side by four, and we're done. One thousand divided by four is two hundred and fifty meters is equal to a quarter kilometers. Again. Look in your book and see which one gives us as a quarter kilometer is the answer. Except they're not going to give it in fraction, they probably are going to give it in decimal. So 0.25 of a kilometer is what we're looking for. That's the very last entry, W. Very last entry, W. Let's see what we can do here. So E equals W. E equals W. Let me change the color one more time. E. E. Equals W. Let's put it here. E equals W. Okay. Five, five down, three to go. Number five is, rather, number six is 25.4 centimeter. 25.4 centimeter. And again, if you don't want to deal with 0.4 centimeters, you don't have to. They're asking you 25.4 centimeter, let's just pretend it's 25 centimeter. And we know, we know, we know that, we know that two and a half centimeter is approximately one inch. One more time. How do we know that? Because we memorized it. We learned it. We memorized our conversion factor. That is the conversion factor. We're not looking for two and a half centimeters. We're looking for 25 centimeters. How do we go from point two to two and a half, which is 2.5? How do we go from 2.5 to 25? To go from 2.5 to 25, we must realize that if you multiply 2.5 by 10, 2.5 you multiply by 10, you're going to move the decimal and it's going to become 25. So multiply both sides by 10. If you multiply this side by 10, we must multiply that side by 10. And there you have it. 10 times two and a half is 25 centimeters. And how do I know that 10 times 2 and a half is 25 centimeter? Uh, this is all of it. Because we know 10 times 2 is 20 and 10 halves are 5. One more time. 10 to the 20 and 10 halves are 5. That's 25. So 25 centimeter must equal approximately 10 inches. 10 inches. Okay. Just because they are using 25.4, that does not mean that you have to use 2.54. Okay. Just tell them to go... Uh, well, we don't want to use a four letter word so I, I won't use the four letter word because that will not be very polite to use four letter word so you just go you just go to, you just you just tell them to go fornicate themselves just use two just use 2.5 you understand no I did not use four letter word you understand F equals what letter is F we're looking for 10 10 inches 10 inches that's R, third entry, R. So, F is going to equal, F is going to equal R. Where is F? F is here. Where is R? R is here. F equals R. Let's move on, shall we? <coughs> Six down, two to go. This is our penultimate one. Second to the last one, G. I hope the video hasn't gotten too long. 25 millimeter question is how much is that going to be? Well, we just did that, didn't we? Is that what it says? 25 25 millimeters Oh, happy time This, was, this one is a little tricky Just stay with me this story 25 millimeter is equal to how many inches? 
Again, how do we know that inches? Because you look at the units in the other column, and there's only, when you talk about millimeter, mm means millimeter, well, they could possibly ask us to convert millimeter to centimeter, or millimeter to meter, or millimeter to kilometers, or they can ask us to convert millimeters to English system, in which case the only option is to convert millimeter into inches. They're not going to ask you to convert millimeter into yard or a feet or, or a mile. They're not going to do that. They keep it very simple. We're just going to go from millimeter to inches. Let's see what they're asking here. Is that what they're looking for, inches? Or maybe they're looking for something else. Let's see what is left at this point. There's only two left. And this is the very last one. Which two entries are still left? But they are the only two entries that are left. If you look at the only two entries that are left here, we just realized that they're asking us to convert this into centimeter. So let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's, let's start the process. We know that 1000 millimeter equals 1 meter. How do we know that? How do we know that? Because milli means thousandth of something. Thousandth of something. So if you take a distance of one meter, which is approximately one yard, if you want to visualize it in your mind, if you want to picture it, we learn that one meter is approximately one yard. You, you know how long one yard is. We use it all the time. That's about three feet. Three feet has 36 inches, except, milli, uh, except meter has 39 inches. It's three inches longer than a yard. It's 39 inches. At least now you can conceptualize it. At least you can, you can visualize it. So if you take that distance and break it up into thousand equal parts, each individual, part, each individual part will be called millimeter because milli means a thousandth of something. Therefore, that's how we know that thousand millimeter will make one meter, which we also know is made up of, which we also know is made up of 100 centimeter. And that's where we want to go eventually. That's what we want to go finally. And how do we know that one meter is made up of 100 centimeter? Because the prefix centi means a hundredth of something hundredth of something. Well, we have to go all the way to 25. What, what can we do? Let's first divide everything by 10. Because this 1000 is too big. Let's divide everything by 10, the whole equation. Okay, watch what happens. If you divide everything, if you divide this pi by 10, you must divide this pi by 10, you must divide that pi by 10. 1000 divided by 10 is 100. 100 millimeter is equal to a tenth of a meter. Which in turn tells us if we divide top and bottom by 10, 0 is going to cancel out, which is going to tell us that it's equal to 10 centimeter, which makes perfect sense. Because if meter is made up of 100 centimeter, then a tenth of a meter must be a tenth of a 100, tenth of a 100, tenth of a 100 is 10. 10 centimeter make a tenth of a meter. You with me? Again, we don't want 100 millimeter. We want 25. Let's divide the entire thing by 4. Divide this by 4, divide this quantity by 4. We don't, don't worry about what this quantity is. We're not interested in this. We're not going to use this thing. As a matter of fact, if you like, you can even ignore it. You can even ignore it. What we are interested in this part and that part. There we go, we are done. So, what we find is that, what we find is that 100 divided by 4 is 25 millimeter equals, and erase, ignore this part, let's move on to this part. 10 10 divided by 4 is going to be 2 and a half centimeter. 2 and a half centimeter. Is there anything that says 2 and a half centimeter? And again, they're not going to say 2 and a half centimeter. They're going to put it in decimal, 2.5 centimeter. And that's the second choice, Q. G equals Q. G equals Q. Where is G? G equals Q. G equals Q. G equals Q. Which means H must equal H, H must equal V. Let's find out what shall we? Let's find out what it says. We're gonna do the last one. This part is done. Let's move on to the very last one. And then tomorrow, tomorrow which will tomorrow We'll go to page 99. Turn to page 99 for a second. On page 99, 
they refer to it, what you see on page 99, they refer to it as a math quiz. They don't call it test. Back in the old book, in the fifth edition, instead of breaking up into three different parts, they put the entire thing in the in a form of a test and they call it test one and test two. This book has two tests. The new book unfortunately only has one and even that one is not put in the form of an entire test but they broke it, broke it up into quizzes. Math quiz, English quiz, science quiz and so forth. I'm referring to it, we are referring to it as a test which is what we're calling a test three which begins on page 99 which is what we're going to start tomorrow on day 166. Enough of the talk, we're done with this thing. Let's do the last entry. Let's just verify. Let's just verify that H is indeed V. In H we have 440 grams. And again, if 440 grams are given to us, if something is given in terms of grams, the only possible thing that they can ask you about is to convert the grams into kilograms or convert the grams into some unit of English measurement. Such as, uh, what do we use in English system? Pound or ounces. Do you understand? But here, if you look at the letter V, they're converting into kilogram. So they are asking us, how many kilos is that? How many kilos is that? Well, we know, we know that 1,000 gram make 1 kilogram. Okay, stay with me. 1,000 gram make 1 kilogram. Oh, we're not interested in 1,000, we somehow have to get, we have to get uh, 440. So, to get 440, let's multiply both sides by, let's multiply both sides by 44. And if you multiply both sides by 44, what we end up saying is that 44,000 grams, 44,000 grams, and don't write 44,000 grams as 44 times, 44,000, write it as 44 times 1,000 gram equals 44 kilos. Stay with me in the story, okay? It's very important that you stay with me in the story throughout. Well, we don't want 44,000 gram, we want 440. It has three zeros, one, two, three. We only want one zero, you see? Here we have three zeros. Thousand has three zeros. One, two, three. We have 44, and we want one more zero after that. We want to get rid of two zeros here. So divide this side by 100, and if you're going to divide this side by 100, we must divide this side by 100. If you divide this side by 100, you can divide top and bottom by 100, this zero is going to cancel out with that zero, this zero is going to cancel out with this zero, we are left with 10, we are left with 10, and 10 times 44 is going to give us 440 grams. And that we find out is 44 over 100 kilograms. 44 over 100 is just 0.44 kilograms. 0.44 kilogram. I do not know how they go about explaining things in the back of the book. That's up to you to do, uh, read and decide which which explanation you prefer. The one we just that I presented here, or what, what they're telling you in the book. But it turns out that we were right. The letter H matches with V. Okay. Just for the record, just just for the for the sake of clarity, I understand. I understand that every time I pronounce this letter. I was mispronouncing it. If I slow down and if I pay attention to it, I can do it correctly. V. I think I have to. Is how you how you pronounce it? V with the lips. But if I'm not careful, as I uh, as I have not been, it comes out as V. The reason is because in my native language, in my native language, we do not have two different sounds. We have in the English alphabet, you have letter V, uh, V, and letter W. B and B, I believe. I, I, cannot, I cannot tell the difference in my ears. I cannot pronounce them properly unless I slow down. So every time I said V, I'm talking about letter V. Do you understand? People ask me what I drive and I proudly tell them that I drive Volvo. And they look at me and they go, what the hell is a Volvo? Well, now you know what it is. It's a brand of a camel. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.